All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. It's been a little while. I've been doing the streamathon for quite some time, and there is still some left. But uh, today we're doing the intro to the free to play through, which begins today. Uh, so, with that, we're just going to jump into this. So, this video is not too long, and I'm going to explain what the free to play through is for those of you that don't know. So, the free to play through is going to be me going through Warframe on a brand new account, spending no money. And of course, doing things as optimally as possible and writing guides for new players for the game. Now that I'll have, you know, the exact experience of what the new player experience is. Uh, I did the last one of these about a year ago, but DE has made a extremely large amount of changes uh, to the just overall progression. Like MR is no longer required for story missions and there's no longer a bunch of blockades in the way that I have to account for. So things are going to be pretty different than last time with that. Of course, we now log into settings to start off. So I just want to go over some of these things that I think are important uh, just because it'll probably help people because settings can be a huge pain. Uh, first and foremost, I don't like this personally. Uh, brightness, I actually turned down brightness just a little bit. Uh, sound settings are going to be like to personal taste. So I'm going to keep everything at 100 to start here because I can just edit it later. Um, hold to sprint is fine, but I do prefer toggle sprint personally. Uh, hold to aim weapon, though, is my preference. And then controller aim assist is all fine. Uh, this is repeated button presses. So this is any kind of a QTE. Um, you can have that just be a hold instead. So for those of you that don't want to tap a bunch whenever a QTE pops up, you can sw swap this to hold. I do personally because they can be repetitive. Uh, colorblind options and the uh, subtitles to start us off. So that's all we need for like the opening here. Just some very minor changes. We are going to go into the options after the intro. Speaking of the intro, uh, I am going to skip it here. Uh, I do suggest you watch it. It is very good, uh, but we don't need it in the opening video for the free to play through. And that brings us to our starter selection. So there's a couple minor changes that have been made to this menu since last we did this, uh, but the starters themselves have not changed. We have Excalibur, Mag, and Volt. And of note, the primary thing I would like to convey to you is that all three of these starters are good and have good builds and can do pretty much all of the content in the game uh, with no problem. None of them are our like best Warframe in the game, but they have been in the past and balance changes can change that in the future. So if you like one of them, you can stick one with one of them. Uh, personally, I would say that like the order of like how good each one is to start as is Mag at the top very handily with Volt following and then Excalibur at the bottom but please keep in mind that like the closeness of these is like single percentage differences between how good each one is uh, i will say that mag just has some really convenient things with how her build can progress that is going to make things a lot smoother but there's no reason you can't do a volt or excalibur as well neat thing that d has added though is that we can actually get some color customization going on right off the rip uh so we're gonna just pick one of these let's go red mag uh, and uh, get started. These are all of our abilities if you want to read through them. Uh, but of course, I have entire videos on any of these Warframes if you want to see what they can do at kind of fuller potential. So, jumping in, we get our tutorial. Also, worth noting, uh, this time around there are... Well, there is one major difference in terms of uh, what's going to be happening in this tutorial. But we'll get to that when we get there. The Vor here, our primary uh, antagonist for the very, very beginning of the game. And we are going to be going uh, to the end of Vor's prize, notably, in this video. And then uh, there will be much more in streams and stuff. And I'm going to be recording other videos and other guides. And, of course, there will be the CPR over on brozyme.com as well, which is going to be updated for new players looking for guidance who don't know what to do. What has he done to you? I can't lose another Tenno. I'm surging your Warframe's power systems. We're surging here, and this means that we have unlimited energy for the moment because our energy is not enabled yet. So we can just pull all these enemies into a nice neat ball, which is going to be um, the best thing that we can do for a large amount of the early game because Mag, her one is just stellar in pretty much all ways. Uh, in terms of mobility stuff and some options, we're going to go over those real quick before we start picking up weapons. So you're going to see me be going very fast. Warframe's movement system has like a lot going on and it's going to take a while to get used to it. So if you're not as fast as me, please don't expect to be. I've been playing this game for over 10,000 hours. Uh, but control wise, I do have some suggestions. Uh, if we look in here 
in terms of anything that needs to be done here. Melee auto-targeting. Personally, I usually keep this off, but it's good for new players. But eventually you may want to like mess with toggling this off so you can kind of not be locked on to targets. We'll keep it on for the purposes of the tutorial. Uh, and then anything else in this menu is not really needed. Um, so we can, you know, if you want to change your sensitivities and stuff, you can. There's certain things on this menu you'll come back to later, but nothing important now. Uh, on controller, this is also like kind of all the same stuff. Uh, which is going to be important for how you're going to be accessing things on controller. I do have an entire like controller control scheme uh, that I do have posted on the Discord for those of you that like want to look into that. But most people tell me I'm a heretic whenever I talk about my controller scheme, uh, so we don't need to go into that business. In terms of these things here, I do suggest your matchmaking ping limit. Uh, lowering this will like lower the amount of people that you match with, but going from 300 to 200 is just a lot more stable. Um, so I would I would generally suggest at least going down to 200 and of course switching your regions if you need to. Uh, cross platform play you'll want on. Don't turn that off because then you won't be able to do a bunch of different things because everything's cross platform now. Uh, and then we have the uh, social aspect stuff. So in in here you have like region chats off by default. Question and answers chat. You can mess with these and keep these on as you'd like, but I would generally advise number one to turn on timestamps because that's way way more helpful, and also to turn off inline private messages because it's just much more confusing. Uh, and then I personally would turn off questions and answers chat. I have gone in there a couple of times, and honestly, you'll get more wrong information than you will right information in that chat. So I would just suggest turning it off. Trade chat and recruiting chat are things you're going to usually come to later for, like, you know, content that you would want to have a group for and for trading items with other players. These things you can leave on and you'll want them, but I would wait until later. Other things in here, you can change, like, your scale and stuff for just readability and all that good business. Uh, profanity filters, so on and so forth. Muting chat notifications if you don't want to hear the, the beep of them if you're getting PMs and stuff, which is all fine. Uh, then your HUD stuff. So we're going to keep all of this on default for what we have here because uh, you can like disable damage numbers and like there's cloud and enhanced and all this stuff. I'm just going to keep this on like the default settings for it because mostly because I want to see them, uh, but also because these aren't going to matter nearly at all to a newer player. Uh, these are things that you'll come to want to customize probably much, much later. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we have in our display settings. In terms of display stuff, Warframe will run on a baked potato. Actually, some of these are... Da, da, da. Yeah, no, these are defaults. Okay, good. I just I changed this in the opening. Uh, Warframe will want to run on a baked potato. No problem. Like, this game is not very high requirement. So I would suggest to, like, turn it up as much as you can. Uh, and, like, probably just keep it at at least 60. Uh, and that's... Pretty easy to do. Notably, the big option here is that there is field of view. I max this. You can run lower if you want to. I think everyone should max it. If you are having problems with motion sickness or anything like that in Warframe and you have not maxed out the field of view setting, it is the absolute first thing I would do because uh, that can immediately alleviate that. Other things here, just like set it to whatever you want. I'm going to keep like these on defaults for now and just you know, chill out with it. Uh, I would suggest turning off film grain and depth of field and motion blur, just because I think they all look bad. Uh, also, Bloom is pretty aggressive. I have the controversial opinion of keeping Bloom on, but I turn it down to five. This five is going to be just fine. Also, weapon elemental effects I don't personally enjoy, but you should keep it on to see if you like how it looks. Uh, and then dynamic resolution, if you really need to get those frames, dynamic resolution can help with that a whole, whole lot. Everything else we're just going to keep on. Sound settings, as we went over before, uh, there's not really anything you need to mess with in here, other than, like, if you don't want to have this. I think this stuff is off by default. I'm pretty sure this is the defaults for these. So you can just disable the in-game voice chat stuff. You almost certainly won't need it. Probably just use Discord instead. Uh, and then accessibility. There's a lot of really good accessibility stuff in this. Uh, we have just a ton. As mentioned before, there's the repeat button presses. Uh, thing and then fire manual trigger weapons continuously. I am a huge proponent of this option. This basically makes it so that if the weapon is a semi automatic weapon that is not like a charge up, like if it's not like a big thing you're charging and then shooting, it will just fire semi automatic weapons at their fire rate consistently. Like you won't have to, like, you know, have a spam click macro and all that nonsense. This will just do it. This essentially is like hold to fire on everything that is not a charge weapon. Notably, we are going to pick up a charge weapon, but. This is, I think, an excellent accessibility feature that just makes the game more enjoyable to play, honestly. Uh, so unless you are really fiddly with your ammo economy, uh, you probably should just turn this one on and you'll have more fun with it. 
So then we have the whole damn weapons, uh, colorblind compensation, all this stuff. Uh, screen shake, generally I would turn this to off. Uh, reduce teammate visual effects. So early game, probably not a big deal. Later game, you may want to turn this on if you fucking can't see. Uh, because sometimes people have ability colors that are maybe not kind to their teammates. So maybe leave it off to start, but you might come back to this later. Uh, and then we have down here uh, the character highlighting. So if you have like a little bit of trouble like visually acquiring enemies, you can turn this on and then enemies will be highlighted in red. Very, very convenient uh, for those of you that have like, you know, like slightly worse eyesight or anything like that. Really nice. Even if you don't, it can make things much more readable in environments. Uh, so if you're having like, you know, if you're missing enemies all the time or something like that, maybe like turn this one on. And maybe you'll have a better time with that. You can also turn on ally highlights and stuff like that, which is all excellent. Uh, we are going to keep that off for this. And then subtitles, uh, cursor color and all that stuff. HUD motion, all that good business. Uh, HUD interface, this is all customizable. You can choose colors for any of this stuff. What you want your shields to be, all this stuff. Basically, I would not suggest messing with this from the start. Unless, of course, you have colorblind con uh, considerations. And then do whatever you need to do. You probably know best. Um, and then... Mess with this stuff whenever you feel like you need to. I will say, the one thing that I do change personally is I change buffs to be green uh, and debuffs to stay red. Blue debuffs doesn't... It's just what I do. We're not going to run into a lot of buffs, but basically whenever they pop up green in the right corner, I know it's one of the buffs. That's just one of the very minor things that I change with this. And uh, that is all that I'm going to mess with in there, but you can change basically everything with that that's options out of the way uh i do have some like custom controls that i mess with in terms of like my actual customized key bindings and things here which you can see here uh most people like don't like my key binds i will note because i have like roll on space and my sprint is on shift also as you saw in the tutorial i have sprint dodge moved off somewhere else i personally am a big proponent of splitting up sprint and roll uh, two different buttons wherever you put them is all fine uh, and then i also jump with my mouse button so that's for your information uh, i think that is a bit better uh but yeah that's gonna do it for all of the stuff in the, the system there that people ask about all the time and now we can move on to the actual bits of the tutorial so to start us off you have the option between the scana and the bow uh the mark one stuff has been taken out of this so you don't have to deal with the lower power versions of these anymore I will say between the two, the Scana and the Bow, the Bow is better hands down. It is so much better. It's not even remotely close, not even a little close. You should be picking the Bow. So much so that they got rid of the Mark I Bow from this and they buffed it to be the actual Bow because the Mark Ones used to be the tutorial weapons. If you picked the Scana, I would unironically tell you to go get the Mark I Bow for credits out of the market as soon as you possibly can because even though it is not the full bow, which takes a little bit more to craft, it is infinitely better than the Skana. The Skana is not worthwhile. Uh, the bow's damage is excellent. Its reach is great for new players whenever you can't increase your reach because you don't have like the mods and stuff for it. It is overall just very, very good. Uh, also, in terms of movement stuff, we're going to be like showing a bunch of this. But the basic thing you want to do in Warframe is you want to crouch to slide while you are sprinting. And then when you, whenever you are sliding like this, you can jump and you will do a bullet jump. You can do this from a lot of different positions. You can jump first and then bullet jump in the air by crouching and jumping. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can roll while in midair to like get your momentum going even further and do all kinds of nice movement. Uh, we have like wall uh, wall jumps and things where you can like you know take this tree for example and just kind of jump up this. You can just keep jumping off of surfaces. Uh, there's a lot of movement tech that you will learn as you play more. And you don't need to know all that stuff right away. Actually, you don't need to know that stuff for like. Uh, a very large amount of hours actually so you'll have plenty of time to get used to it stealth attacks you can just use by clicking your interact button so we're about to come across our next weapon choice uh here honestly i don't think that this choice particularly matters uh your secondary is not likely to be used very much uh there's the kunai or the lotto Personally, because of what we're going to pick after this, I would generally say picking up the Lotto is going to be the better choice, as it is just like a very generic like hit scan weapon. So we can just just do that.
Moving on further. And run up through here. Uh, here we'll have to just do the, the basic wall jumping tutorial. Uh, this is generally like going to be pretty easy. But if it takes you a few tries, especially if you're on mobile, please, like, not a big deal. Most people aren't good at, like, this movement for tens, if not more hours. So, please do not be discouraged by not schmoving. You will, you will get to schmoove eventually. We have war here. We will have a minor scuffle with. You can basically just run up on him with the bow and beat him up. He will try and teleport away from me. This is a good chance to, like, you know, get better at some of the movement. The lotto is, like, not going to do a lot to him here, if I'm honest with you. Uh, also, some other, like, melee stuff you can get into is slam attacks. So, you can actually use middle mouse click by default to do a heavy attack uh, while you're in the air with your melee. And it will do some significant damage here. Not that it's required, but it's, like, a thing you can do. And heavy slams may be a thing much later in this playthrough as well. Oh, also for weapon switching, uh, you can swap with F. Uh, or you can just hit E to melee, which is a quick melee. You can hold F to, like hard equip your melee if you don't want it to keep going in your pocket. That's a thing that some new players run into. Where, like, they just want to keep the melee out. You just need to break his shields here. We'll have this console here. He's going to just release that. You can, you can, by the way, kill as many of these enemies as you'd like, like, just for practice. Uh, I'm skipping a lot of them just because they're not required. And then here we have our primary choice. So now this is where there is a change in the tutorial for those of us that have done this before. Uh, usually I would pick the Bratton. However, because of a lot of the restrictions that have been lifted on us, uh, we're not going to be getting a weapon similar to the Paris particularly early as we'd like. So the Paris is actually going to offer us a lot more utility and allow one particular interaction to go a lot more smoothly for us. So definitely I think the Paris is superior over the Bratton at this point. The Bratton is a little easier to use because like with the Paris, it is a bow they have to charge up and like fire. It does have travel time. It has drop. It has all that stuff going for it. I do think it's also quite a bit cooler than the Bratton. So it's nice that it's actually like probably the correct pick now. Um, but it is harder to use but of course with harder to use you get a bit more damage so that is nice to start with as you can see it's just like one tapping these enemies here we just needed to get our ship and get out of here this is the grenier hack you can just tap on um space in order to oh, not if your uh mouse is on a different monitor there we go <laughs> Tap on space to hit those. Stop touching me. Oh, we can get our ship. Also, a notable thing about this is the Paris actually can collateral. So, you can hit multiple enemies as long as they're in a line with each arrow. Which will be much more relevant with later bows, more so than the Paris. But when you can do it, hey, you killed two guys with one arrow. is not bad. You also don't have to charge the Paris up all the way. You can just quick fire it, and it's honestly not too bad. It'll do a lot less damage, um, and you will lose some stats by doing it that way, but against these really early enemies, you can just kind of plunk away, and it's not going to be too big of a deal. It's very awkward for me to use this that way, though. All right. With these guys all pelted with arrows, we're now ready to go and get our ship back.
Get our first login reward, which can be any number of things, huge amounts. Uh, also, I did do a um, my account. I did like two factor it. You get a little three day affinity booster if you do that, which is very convenient. Uh, also, this is the thing that's just currently happening right now. I'm not gonna use these forma uh, on this run, but yeah. Also, I'm also not going to use the anniversary items that everyone gets whenever they make new accounts. Not using any of that stuff. Um, so we will not be using the Dex and Kana. It is very good if you're new and you have access to it. You should be using it, but for the purposes of the free to play through, I'm not going to use any of the, like the limited time. Like here's just a bunch of stuff things that Warframe does, even though that happens pretty often. I may level the Dex Nakana once I have a weapon that's better than it. You honor orders. We have our arsenal turned back on. I can supply the operator with you can go in here, you have your basic options for colors and things you can do. You can see all your weapons and things. Those have been looted as well. And we have our ship, which we will be turning on. So you need to restore the ship's comms. Uh, early on, if you have a quest objective, you can actually just click up here and it will just go to your next mission. But things are also just on the map here on the star chart. But clicking in the top right is a surefire way to do your next quest objective. We will gain a number of things in the top right of that menu uh, pretty soon. So jumping in, uh, this is our intro to spy missions. Uh, spies are basically where we are needing to retrieve a thing from a vault. Also, as you see, little material deposits like that, like Rubito, Rubito formations and like, you know, noun thing, basically break those. Uh, Rubito is going to be like local to Earth and you're, you're going to see other ones as well as we pass by them. Uh, but basically, if you see like a little resource um, cache, you're going to want to bust it open because you will want the resources as a new player. Uh, also, the like Grenier Force Fields. I think this is this one permanently off for the first time it's on for the tutorial. It is. You can just go down here. This one will turn off eventually. Someday. Does not turn off in the tutorial? Do they not cycle in the tutorial? Or we'll just crouch under it, I suppose. So we can go up here. That's weird. That actually may be a bug. They're supposed to cycle back and forth. And then we can just hack this. Same as we hacked the other thing before. They won't even know it's gone. All the lasers and everything turn off on your way out. Head to extraction. Also, killing enemies and everything will get you XP here, but I'm not going to be particularly worried about that because we're just showing off the tutorial and trying to get through that quickly for everyone who wants to see. Uh, anything that they, you know, are having trouble with. And we can just get straight to the exit of the mission. This gets us some very important mods. We get Hornet Strike, Serration, and Pressure Point. These are all of our base damage increasing mods, which will become very, very useful very, very soon. Uh, but for now, it's just important to note that we are getting them. Turn on all of our stuff. The operator has recovered a segment of the enemy. Install it now. And next we are going to be liberating an imprisoned arms dealer, as you can see in the top right. But we do have some dialogue while that is going on. Oh, also a notable thing, uh, just while they're talking for fashion purposes. Uh, in here, you can change, of course, colors and everything like that. If you don't want weapons to appear on your back, you can actually turn off visible while holstered. So you can just make it so that you are not seeing any of those if you prefer that generally i prefer that except for like specific fashion setups with certain warframes but um in general i'm i'm partial to this look got to liberate the imprisoned arms dealer on earth as our next objective We're gonna be rescuing darvo in here this is our uh intro to the mission type rescue which pretty much is going to work exactly how it does here uh with various security increases as you get to a more difficult ones uh here are these crates as well you usually want to like bust these open these will have like energy sometimes materials there's a ferrite deposit 
uh, things like that. You're going to want to make sure you're busting those open as you see them. I would not suggest like scouring the map. That's a good one. Uh, I would not suggest like scouring the map, but like just if you happen to be running past it, there's no reason not to hit it. Uh, and there's actually a number of things you can get later that will be like abilities that break these things for you uh, that make it very easy to just like zoom through a mission uh, and get all of the resources and things you are looking for. But yeah, whenever you see them, like as you're running past, it's definitely worthwhile to grab them because you are going to use the materials for sure. Uh, but it's not something you need to like clear every crate on a mission because there will always be more. In here, bust this fan open, uh, come into this room. And just open these up looking for a Durbu. We just picked up an organ shatter mod, which is great. There's Darvo. You can give Darvo your weapon, I think. No, you can't. It's something you can do later. Uh, we can just leave the way that we came in. Or you can use the front door if you want to hack it open. But this is usually a little faster. Uh, I will say, in terms of rescues, the best thing to do is to simply get to the end um, as fast as possible. Because the rescue target will kind of teleport to catch up with you if you're moving fast enough. Uh, but usually that's like not a big deal and you can revive them if they go down anyway so you don't need to be super concerned with that we do get like a debuff here from vor which basically turns off our the ability for our shields to regenerate not a big deal for us because we're going to be done with this mission post haste we can go to the exit This we get another host of very important mods. We get continuity, intensify, stretch, vitality, uh, redirection, uh, and we also picked up an organ shatter. The organ shatter, I believe, is not guaranteed, but the rest of these are uh, all extremely important mods that are all going to be very useful. Redirection, vitality increases your amounts of shields and health. Uh, these will make your powers better. Organ shatter makes your crits better. All mods that you will use for honestly your entirety of your time with Warframe. All of these mods will see. We'll see play and usage on a number of things. And turn on our mod segment. Speaking of getting those mods. This is all turned on. Yeah, you can look into this if you'd like to. This menu might be a little overwhelming, but don't worry. On the free to play through, we're going to keep things pretty simple. If you're looking for new player builds, I have many of them. Uh, so no worries about that. You don't really need to understand any of this right now. Then we can go in here. We've got some levels, so we can spend a little bit, though, and I'll toss in some, uh, some stuff in here. Just give it some, some basic things that'll help us just a, just a little bit. Just whatever fits is good. Uh, the main things to note in here, I will go over this real quickly, is, like, Vitality, for example. This has, like, a, this little polarity here. You can see what it's called. Actually, it's called the Vazarin. Shorthand, we call it a D-polarity. This is a dash polarity, which is also known as Naramon, but don't worry about their actual names. Dash polarity, D polarity, that's the shorthand for it. V polarity, we call them what they look like. Uh, if you hold this, you can see that this turns red. If we put it there, you can see that the correct one is actually the dash. This D costs three in this slot, and in an unpolarized slot, it costs two. This costs four normally, but if we put it in the correct slot, it costs two. So things cost 50% more um if you put them in the wrong slot and things cost 50 percent less if you put them in the correct slot so half cost or additional cost but so if you can match them you should also throw things into like the rest of our stuff just whatever fits is fine uh, at this point you'll have only things that are beneficial to you and they'll be like very minor overall Next up, we'll be getting our foundry online, which is where we'll be crafting many, 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 many items. We must restore the ship's foundry also there is story happening a nearby ore extraction tldr of war hooked us up with something that will kill us if we don't fix it, it so we're getting blueprints and materials and our systems back online to make sure we don't die 
Oh, also, I did not switch my instance to solo, but that's okay. This should be another new player. Who is boosting me with speed, which is very much appreciated. That's one of Volt's abilities. It's very nice to have. In here, the Foundry segment is just, just right here. I will wait for this new player so that they can come in here and pick this up. Uh, which means there's probably a cut here. <laughs> but I don't want to ruin their experience with the game. This was once a prosperous independent colony until the Grimoire arrived. The Queens fear you, but I will show them their love will return when I deliver you to them. Oh, Thief's Wit, that's a good one. All right, they've grabbed the foundry segment. Uh, like I said, I just I don't desire to do all of the objectives for a new player, and would rather they have a good time. And now we'll just exterminate some Grenier. Getting a few mods here. We picked up a thieves' wit and a steel fiber. Thieves' wit useful. Steel fiber. E rarely utilized the increase to armor. Uh, there's a different version of that mod that sees more use, but for kind of different reasons. Using Mag's Wand to put enemies into a nice, neat ball. And then kill them with the bow. And with that, we can get out of here. Um, if it takes the newer player a little while to navigate to extraction, that's fine. We'll just cut here. I'll grab some resources. All right, good stuff. Mission, mission complete. Uh, things we get from here, we get some Bane mods, don't worry about those, but importantly, uh, we get Heated Charge and we get Fury, which are both very, very good. These two we picked up, so they're random, but Heated Charge and Fury from this and Convulsion uh, are all guaranteed and extremely useful, ones we will use quite a bit, actually. A Convulsion you're going to want to put, oh no, not this is the uh, pistol lecture, we'll get the other electric soon. Your is ready for I bought a squad here, we'll go to solo mode. <laughs> Turn our foundry back on. We're on for the first time, I suppose. This is a new account. So other things here. So we're trying to build the Ascaris Negator. So we need resources, which is what we're up to next. in order to build the countermeasure blueprint. Resources soon. Colonel, I've just received a very explicit message from your ship's airblock. If you're looking for resources, why didn't you just say so? I know just a place, but I demand an apology. My mother is no gymnast, and she would never eat those things. You can go straight to... Operator, I am sorry. All right, time to go and get the resources we need to make ourselves not die. This is basically a tutorial mission on just picking up resources in missions. This is not a mission type that's going to appear again. But as I said before, it is a good thing to keep in the habit of. A notable thing about objectives, they do tell you how far away they are. So going for the closest one first will make you go the least distant, just like a minor efficiency thing. We can pick this up. Notable thing, you pick this up as your objective, break all the stuff around these. They spawn you plenty of, like, nice resources to have uh, just right around these objectives, so make sure you break everything near them, as you will use those materials later. Keep moving. There 
Also, Corpus stuff. Uh, this is going to be like different looking resources caches. The Rubido and things like that that are guaranteed will look the same though. Uh, so just keep an eye out for like the different looking containers. Also, you can open lockers. Though opening lockers, I find to be extremely, extremely rarely worth it. Also, uh, these laser wires, uh, the cameras see you in Corpus maps and then these go up. If you just touch them, you'll get knocked down. But you're immune to knockdown whenever you roll, so you can roll through them as like a nice, helpful early game tip. Also worth noting, rolling gives you very, very large amounts of damage reduction. So if you're going to be hit by a big attack, maybe roll. Uh, we have more resources to grab here. Open the locker we have to, and then might as well grab these while we're here. Okay, getting in the habit of rolling through these doorways will get, make you knocked down significantly less. We can grab our last stuff here. Also, the unique sound that these make um, is the like hidden cache sound uh, that will be present in many missions. So you'll shortly, I'm sure you will completely internalize that sound. Because if you hear it, it means there's something you should be picking up. It's more Rubido. we can head to the exit because now we have all of our materials that we need this gets us some important stuff here equilibrium which is an excellent mod uh flow which is not usually super useful for newer players but comes up later uh and then enemy sense which is enemy radar which is not going to be useful early but also sometimes comes up eventually but equilibrium we will see quite a bit of use of as a newer player depending on what warframe you happen to be using now build the negator. I admire you for your struggle. But now I am part of you. You can grab that and get this thing off of us. Do something. Help the operator. We Grenier are millions strong, but with a You do just have to hang out here and wait for the um for this, the story to progress. Now we have you. Operator, do not abandon me again. Build the countermeasure. I did this for there we go. Love. Sometimes you have to go in and out of the foundry. Get that taken off us. to disarm Vor's Ascaris. I thought... I thought I lost you. Oh no. The Ascaris had a tampering failsafe. It's burrowed into me and armed itself. We'll need to find Vor before it detonates. And now Vor's gotta die. Get to navigation. Boarding a Grenier ship to access their personnel records will be the fastest way to find Vor. Operator, what are you waiting for? Now we need to obtain a nav segment. Uh, I believe this mission is... Uh, God, what, was, what was the old mission type called? The currently non-existing mission type. I believe it was originally called Raid. Like, the, the item for it is sometimes used for other things. But uh, I believe the original mission type way back in the day was called Raid. Need to pop this open. 
Kill a couple guys while it opens up. And grab the segment. Uh, so notably here, that yellow objective, they're going to ask you to like go save some colonists. You are welcome to go do that. You should be yelling like, hey, you know, follow your heart. It does not affect anything at the current time, uh, like, you know, 10, 11 years into the game. So if you want to do it, I encourage you to do so. Uh, otherwise, like you, you can just you can just head out. You can just head on out. You also get like another like debuff. Which is very funny that we got the debuff while, while in midair. But we're out of here. Got the Galleon Nav coordinates. Also a magazine warp dropped, which is not going to come up. A lot, Lots of different mods to add to our collection. When you are ready, proceed to the navigation console. Put in the navigation. And it is time to go kill Captain Vor. I am going to do this slow. Um... Just so that it's like more clear, like what the mechanics of this fight are. This is our chance. We just need to do, get to Vor's arena. Oh, also, a thing I did not mention that is probably going to be helpful. Uh, if you aim in the air, you will glide. You can you can aim glide to like increase the distance of your jumps and things. You can also do attacks in midair with melee weapons. Uh, so if you have like airborne enemies or anything like that, you can still get them with melee, uh, just with that system. So that is a, a thing that is worth noting. Grab more Rubido because we will want to need it. Busting open all these crates. Lots of good Rubido. Carry it as well. Here we have Avor's Arena. The war will spawn in, uh, and the basic gist of what's going to go on here is he has a few different attacks that you can avoid pretty obviously, uh, some of which that he used in the tutorial. And whenever he gets lower on life, he will form a shield, which is going to be very soon here, because uh, the bow is quite good. And he'll summon these guys, and then if you beat these guys, his shield will go down, and you can continue beating on him. I think you can also just wait him out. Um... But it is not a not a whole lot. Very simple for like you know early fight here. He has two bubbles. That's a grenade. I prefer to avoid. Yeah, whapping whapping him with the stick is a a good way to go. And there he goes. Now he's down. Also, don't forget that you do have warframe powers so whenever you have the ability to use them. Sometimes they're very useful for killing like a bunch of guys at once, for example. Usually, if you see a group of more than four, it's worth it to hit your one as mag. At least as a new player. And with that, Vor is defeated. Also, I've just realized that the music in the game has not been playing because I did not touch these. And it was still using my old settings, I think. And this is concluding the tutorial, which is Awakening Endvor's Prize. Obviously, there is still a lot to learn and do, um, but this is going to do it. Let's get our nice quest end screen. But yeah, 
Uh, that is the start of the free to play through. Hopefully, this has been helpful for any of you that need were like making early game choices or anything like that, or want to just like learn a little bit more, maybe get some options in there and stuff of that business. Uh, I am going to be streaming this playthrough on Twitch, so check me out over there. The rest of it will be streamed. I'll be recording videos live and doing all kinds of different guides and things uh, over there. So if you want to check that out, go over to twitch.tv slash brozyme. Uh, and if you want to just get into uh, like the big major guides that I'm also going to be writing, uh, that is going to be over on brozyme.com. And thank you very much to all of the patrons and Twitch subscribers that help support this. And of course, for watching on YouTube as well. It is all very helpful and much appreciated. And uh, I will see you over on Twitch for more of this, I suppose. All right. We're back from Tenocon and the streamathon is going to continue. Uh, but... There will, of course, I will try and have there be videos as well as the stream at the same time, if I can. Also, thank you to the $10 patrons, Atheon, Alex Parnum, Arbiter Daydream, Benuvin, Brutus Salazar, Canalaftra, Club World 3, Dylan Dworski, Athrain, Afan, James Harson, JC4 Science, Josh, Lou Xanth, Malik X Williams, Mark Smith, Mikkel, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Ruby, Sanyu, Skur, Sharp247, Tamrielic Wastelander, Tester ZWP, the Coupon of Death, Homeworm, Victor Palmer, Waifu Wars, Guadada 1, and Sarah Fear. And of course, all of my other patrons as well. It is incredibly appreciated uh, for all of your support. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna try and keep we're gonna try and keep the videos a little bit more regular while the streamathon continues. Uh, and of course we do have a uh, free to play through coming soon.